Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode that will probably be more enjoyable if you're on drugs. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your television set. Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, I recorded a totally sick intro, but the mic wasn't working, so I guess I should just go f*** myself. Basically, in it, I was saying, today we're going to be shooting some Kodak Aerochrome, which is a color infrared film that was discontinued in 2009. Yep, Kodak was discontinuing film stocks long before Fuji. I will be shooting with the Canon AE-1, and the film has been preloaded because it's strongly recommended you load it in a pitch black room due to the sensitive nature of it. Here's a quick visualization of what the loading process looked like. Um, so what the hell? How did I acquire some of this mythical film? Since it was discontinued, Aerochrome has become very, very hard to come by, often going for absurd prices over on the dark web. However, back in 2015, I somehow had the foresight to buy four rolls of Aerochrome from the Film Photography Project, which is probably the only smart investment I made that entire year. No? My entire life. At this point in time, I've shot three of those four rolls, the third roll being for this video. Here are some of my shots from the first two times I tripped on Aerochrome. As some of you know, Aerochrome doesn't quite look like this right out of the box. So how exactly did I get that red pink shit everywhere that makes it look like you're on an ungodly amount of LSD? Basically, it's strongly recommended that you shoot Aerochrome with a very deep orange filter to bring out the effect of red plant life and blue skies, or basically the Star Trek Into Darkness look. A lot of people hate on this movie. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. They're right. For these shots, I used the B&W 49040 4XE orange filter in case that helps anyone. Be forewarned, if you don't use an orange filter, red filter, yellow filter, whatever, your shot will turn out blue, very blue. Bluer than a blue man from the blue man group's ass. For future reference, because I can't find it online anymore, here's the full list of guidelines for shooting aerochrome that I was given when I bought it. Anyway, Caleb and I were up in Northern California and I figured it was time to shit or get off the pot. This shot is aerochrome perfection, in my opinion. It looks like some sort of abstract painting. The vibrant hits of herpes red are complemented naturally by the Jolly Rancher turquoise. So, I have no idea what happened here. I took a picture of this red barrier and somehow the aerochrome turned it yellow. My best guess is that the barrier is made of some sort of recycled plant-based material. Either way, it made the photo look pretty damn cool. I really like this shot as well because it kind of just looks like a photo of a beach, but if you look closely, you can see some vibrant red seaweed washed up on the shore. It's almost like the shot is hiding this wonderful little secret. Actually, I take that back. It kind of looks like a whale washed ashore and to get rid of it, someone blew it up with dynamite. Now you might be like, why in the good golly f would Kodak make a film like this? Was it because all Kodak employees were secretly getting high on E6 chemicals back in the day? Possibly. Kodak actually originally made this film to be used in war. Kodak got in touch with the US government and was like, hey, there's a part of the electromagnetic spectrum that is invisible to the naked eye. The cool thing about infrared light is that it reflects magnificently off of the chloroplast in trees, grass, chronic, bushes, and the rest of your favorite botanical species. But other natural or man-made objects, not so much. So Kodak was like, 
Maybe that would be helpful uncovering enemies draped in camouflage, I don't know. And the US government responded by funding their Kickstarter campaign completely. After the war, Aerochrome continued to be produced, though mostly for forest surveying applications, which frankly doesn't sound as badass as its original use. Eventually in 2009, Kodak was like, Fuck, no one gives a shit about film anymore. So they discontinued Aerochrome completely, which means that now in 2021, it's extremely rare. You know how they say a picture is worth a thousand words? Well, this one is not. Some of these shots were a little underexposed. That happens sometimes with expired film. I shot most of these at 320 ISO, where Aerochrome is actually rated at 400. But I guess it wasn't enough. Aerochrome definitely craves light as much as I crave donuts. God, I hate being on a diet. The tricky thing with expired color positive film is that, as far as I know, there really isn't too much you can do to counter the effects of expiration. For example, with expired milk, you can pinch your nose, start chugging, and hope you don't shit your pants. For expired color negative film, you can overexpose a little bit to remedy any loss of sensitivity. Unfortunately for expired color positive film, it's either good or it's not, and generally, that has everything to do with how it was stored. Speaking of which, these shots came in very purple, so I had to white balance them in Lightroom to get them looking a bit more final. In case it's not already obvious, do not underexpose this film because it'll look like brontosaurus sh Give me a little bit of leeway though because we're dealing with high contrast scenes and expired color positive film. You may have heard of Aerochrome from several different places, but I think probably the most popular instance of its use is when Richard Moss shot with it to document a civil war that was raging in the Congo. The project was called Infra, and you can buy a copy of the book for the small price of 800 things off the dollar menu. Later on, Moss actually returned to shoot some 16 millimeter Aerochrome in a project called Enclave but we don't really hear anything about this ongoing humanitarian disaster. And so I was, I was fascinated then to bring this film which, which registers the invisible, makes visible the unseeable, um, to bring that to a place which also, it was a metaphoric leap of course, but it was, in my mind, it was a way of sort of trying to bring these two things together and just see, see what would happen. If you've ever seen the movie Beasts of No Nation, you may recognize that there's a scene that was heavily inspired by Moss's work. Real quick, while I'm editing, I'd also like to highlight the work of Kareem Sahai, who shot a set of Aerochrome while he was in North Korea, of all places. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Before this video is wrapped up and never spoken of again, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you're a photographer or artist of any kind looking to get your work out into the world through a professionally designed template, then look no further. It's no secret, the best way to impress a potential client is by dunking in front of them. But if you can't dunk, it's always a good idea to have a well-rounded and organized space to display your work. Luckily for you, or anyone like me who has no website building experience, Squarespace is an all-in-one website hosting platform. I've been using Squarespace for a couple years now, and I can honestly say it's been the easiest experience to host my photography portfolio, as well as provide analytics for my site and links to everything I do online. So. What are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. So is Aerochrome dank as f or not dank as f? You bet your sweet ass it's dank as f.
It's just one of those legendary stocks that immediately grabs your attention and makes you do a double take when you see images shot on it. It's just otherworldly. As I mentioned before, Kodak doesn't make this stock anymore, but there's hope. You can join me by emailing, tagging, and petitioning Kodak to bring it back, but chances are, they'll ignore your pleas, like they keep ignoring the 600 pages of erotic Kodak fan fiction that I wrote for them. On the other hand, a representative for Kodak Alaris did briefly mention that they are working on reviving an old film. We did see them bring back Ektachrome in 2019, so who knows, maybe they're working on a formula for Ektachrome Infrared, otherwise known as Aerochrome. But for now, one can only speculate and hope that it comes back until the day it magically appears once again just like the McRib. If you're fortunate enough to drunkenly stumble upon a roll of this film, then congrats. This film was made for 35mm 120, and as legend has it, large format. That's just a rumor I've heard though. There's no validity to it, I don't have any evidence of it, I've never seen it before, and frankly, I could just be making it up. Now you might be saying, come on, it's 2021, isn't there some way to emulate Aerochrome? Yes, there are a few ways to get the Aerochrome look, but let's be honest, the real thing is always better but don't let your blow up doll hear that. Probably the easiest way is to just shoot with a digital camera and alter the colors. However, you can also try something called trichrome photography with black and white infrared film. Furthermore, I also have a very, very strong suspicion that there's already a stock out there that when paired with the right filter will give you the aerochrome look. More on that in a future video. I know that's not helpful now, but are any of my videos helpful ever? Probably not, no. What am I gonna do with my final roll of aerochrome? I don't know yet. I have an idea to shoot it this year, but it's gonna take a considerable amount of effort on my part, and to be frank, I'm lazy as shit. Anyway, that's it. Drug trip over. I'll see you in two weeks for another video that is nowhere near as exciting, I'm sure.